Конечно. Добрый вечер, день. Afternoon, evening. Hello to everyone. I'm glad to welcome you. Sorry for this four time lapse already. So we have a quorum. So our colleagues are late, but we're going to have them soon. I would like to represent my, introduce myself. My name is Alisa Prudnik. I'm the director for regional development of this state center in Rossi Zoo. In fact, I'm really happy to be moderator of this session as uh, the cultural bonus uh, burden is a kind of tricky thing as we are being the representative museums we are not considered ourselves as bonus but the core of everything and this is uh, a permanent dilemma of the business on KPI how to calculate this KPI among the cultural projects and the projects at the crossroads and interchange different disciplines. So we have a unique case as among participants. Uh, there are fewer colleagues from the cultural sector, but more colleagues from the business sector. Uh, and I'm happy about this. It's the right dynamics. I would introduce our participants. The right, uh, I have Aksana Madrenka, who is director for the Fund of Support, the State the Theatre of Gallery. Roman Latipov, the first deputy head of the Moscow underground. Hare, Ina Yarkova. We're getting back the founder of Font uh, Alive City. Yulia Minz, the PR director of Russian Press and his museum. My Kim Blashko, Director General of uh, Gordon Development. No, he's not present. Ivan Romanov, Executive Director of LSR Group. Anton Yakovenko, he's not here. And Marina Lubelska, Deputy Head of uh, Cross Concern. Hare. We have a request from our participants from the Union of uh, Combination, the Union of Moscow Underground and the Tragic of Gallery. Some one of them is going to leave early, so I would be pleased to give the floor to Raman Latipov and their uh, joint presentation with Aksana Bandarenka about the project, which is quite vivid and it's great honor for me to talk about this project from my standpoint it is huge breakthrough as of today unprecedented uh, measure it is a uh, dream come true so Raman I have a complimentary introduction so please take the floor thank you very much for the floor let me start I have a tiny presentation in general we all used to perceiving underground as a big infrastructural campaign. Here are some figures, 5.5 thousand of uh, carriages, uh, huge number of railways, uh, so two-thirds of the Eiffel Tower weight we're changing every year. It's a huge uh, volume of air, 2.3 trillion of uh, uh, cubometers uh, in general. The underground is not about infrastructure, but about uh, passengers. The underground, we would like to see people perceiving underground as a passenger organization. We see we are one of the biggest organizations in Europe in terms of the uh, passenger turnover. We have 2.5 trillion passengers uh, on an annual basis compared with the federal RGD company, about 1 billion. Passengers Lufthansa, 79 million passengers per year. We're a huge passenger company. And being a passenger company, we're doing three things. The first thing, we're 
talking with our passenger. The second point, we are listening to the passenger. The third point, we're trying to be a cultural platform as we are in the center of this city, huge, beautiful city. We're trying to live uh, in peace with the city. And here are some things I'm not going to touch upon. I'm going to touch upon the cultural uh, met underground as a cultural platform. I'm going to talk about a few projects and the project with the Tretic of Gallery, the music um, in underground project. We had some days which reflect what is going on in the city. That is, there was a day of star uh, wars of Darth Vader coming to the underground. That was the day of uh, children protection, the victory day. Many events are celebrated in Moscow underground. There are many cultural um, um, events, bali, cinema, and the event with the Tretic of Gallery. So here in brief, what we are we did on music project it is a network of unique platforms where within two weeks every volunteer can arrange a platform and to speak there so many moscovites have very positive attitude to the project have positive attitude to this platform and we have a number of uh, bands who actively engaged in all our events they come to us and they ask to play out at our internal concerts as they like to work in the underground and they like underground as itself. I would like to give the example of the Cup of Confederation which uh, uh, has been already held. So in order of the Cup of Confederation together with the Kremlin Bali, we arranged the performance for the guests of our for foreign uh, supporters from supporters from different cities and we had very positive feedback we produced new souvenirs there was a championship on table football which gathered a lot of supporters we do all uh, to turn the metropolitan underground into cultural platform to live it together with the city after this illustration i'd like to get to the core project uh, joint with the tragic of gallery i'm going to talk about about this project from the perspective of Met Underground, then I would like to give the floor to Oksana, who is going to talk about it uh, from the perspective of the representative of uh, uh, art. Now I'm going to give some insight how it looks like from inside out in terms of the technical arrangement. So we started in November 2016. This project is going to finish in July this year, 12.8 million people used in branded uh, uh, carriage train and uh, Aksana is going to tell us what is uh, there. Uh, about 13 million people saw the blackboard, uh, several uh, uh, events, uh, nights in underground with the orchestra playing out. There were uh, wonderful events and we get very positive responses from our passengers. I would like to thank Oksana for that. would like to thank our colleagues for the tolerance as people of art. And the Moscow Underground, any technical organization, any business uh, uh, get together, the process is very difficult. So what did we do to arrange that? Or taking different billboards to the uh, train carriage, it's different regulation, so we have uh, different procedures. If it is a branded uh, carriage, you cannot take it out of the... So it is a different regulation to sustain this uh, carriage when we organize uh, performances. There are escalators, so the musicians uh, cease, didn't want to uh, play out, so we regulated ventilation system, we regulated escalators. We regulated the electricity supply system. It was a manual approach as the main illustration which demonstrated our uh, cooperation. So uh, Aksana came up to me and said I came to the uh, specialist in underground. I asked when the last train was supposed to be. It was at 1.48 a.m. and then we would be ready. There were some musicians, they started to rehearse. Uh, so you are within your time limits. And there were some uh, special other trains. And why are the special trains moving around? You ask about uh, but the regular trains, but not about special trains. So thank you very much for your uh, attention. So please take the floor.
so it's a great pleasure for me. Uh, thank you for an emotional introduction. People who work in art, we do understand when you are somewhere in the community and the, uh, the first thing that uh, happens, of course, you share your presentations, you are fully engaged in those who you work with. So it was great pleasure for us from the Tratic of Gallery that we were really engaged in a single momentum and in our activity we engaged a huge number of people working in uh, a Moscow underground uh, organization. So I'm going to speak about detail about unprecedented case which uh, took place with transport infrastructure, in particular with underground. It is the project Intensive 20. And talking about this uh, project, of course, we looked into the activity within cultural activity on part of uh, underground so, and what actually happened uh, in, in the world. And we understand that what we're doing right now, integrate our museum activity, the biggest uh, Russian museum of Russian art, integrate it in uh, Moscow underground. It is unique uh, in terms of this uh, standpoint, the project. For our, it was a task to create the system, the structure, the project, which was supposed to last for eight to nine months, to give the opportunity to uh, lose themselves into this activity. Tens of millions of passengers of the Park Culture Station, every museum can dream of that. So. Our task was to show our activity and to tell about the history through the current prisma of modern culture to a maximum number of passengers. So the Moscow Underground the Department of Transport, uh, who provided uh, huge support, clearly understood that with our help, giving this very useful information to the passengers who spent as maybe in a third part of the dirty underground. It is a, a huge upbringing of loyalty, loyalty among the passengers. I would be very brief on this very interesting uh, presentation. I know that uh, Krimsky, Vau, and the Tretik of Gallery have the collection of the 20th century, but most are uh, used to, if I go to the Tretik of Gallery, I go to uh, see around Shishkin, Rubens, Avazovsky, and huge collection. And Krimsky, Vau is still beyond the imagination and um, being museum representative of our Rushinsky period. And um, Krimsky Vau is Moscowite, so our task in this co-branding project, which we developed together with Underground, was to bring the right perception of uh, the Tretik of Gallery initiative of our, our offline uh, initiatives, uh, online, offline activity, particularly in the Tretik of Gallery, of our offline activity were concentrated in the Underground Station Park Kulturi. So the project had three parts. So we separated the art of the 20th century, uh, the 2030s, the 50s, 60s, and the 60s, 90s. Uh, and we uh, changed the image in the Park Cultura Underground Station, uh, starting with billboards, which are situated in the uh, interchanges. Started from excavator tunnels, and here in the uh, pictures you can see the first period dedicated to avant-garde. Our working group consisted of uh, professional uh, brand uh, promoters and digital specialists, copywriters, and of course the scientific uh, people from the Tretik of Gary who worked on the content and wording of the project. So moving up and down the escalator for eight months, you it was uh, possible to see the whole history of the 20th century. So it's an image project. So the task was to maximally involve in our activity and to draw the passengers' attention and to uh, expect this passenger in the Tragic of Galeria. These are the pictures from the holes of the stations, billboards, very interesting, colorful visual style. 
which is very appealing to the attention of people who are not involved in our activity. These are uh, uh, prominent quotes of authors. So when you would uh, uh, leave the train, you would fly to those wonderful stickers uh, uh, then to to visit Chagall, so this is a, with pun in Russian. So, with names of the most uh, uh, visit and iconic representatives of the epoch. So, but uh, the link that uh, between the three periods of art uh, was train. So, train was a live museum, according as generally accepted, uh, according to all pollings in Afisha. So, uh, this Roman, sorry, so this is the uh, most beautiful train that still runs while well, circulates uh, uh, following the green uh, line, the circle line, and from uh, the first to the ninth car, you can go through the history uh, of art in the 19th century through quotations, um, through crops of artworks, through catching points points uh, within the train where you can uh, take a selfie picture and be part of our promotion. So thanks for um, the Metro of Moscow that accepted such violations of the branding, but well, it was just uh, a benefit. So we printed uh, like uh, two unique Troika uh, cards which were which also served as an invitation to our night events, which were uh, arranged at uh, Park Kulturi and Mayakovska uh, metro stations. Uh, and uh, Yuri Basmet and his uh, orchestra, his band, uh, would also accompany us, and we would put uh, these artworks uh, on the metro stations, and we would add them with a uh, lighting elements. We worked with a very nice art company. But offline company uh, should be should have an online base and we developed intensive twenty dot RU website. So I would recommend you all of you to find this website because this is a really brief mm, clear and understandable illustration of the history of art. So it's edutainment. So what uh, is hidden behind uh, the black square? Or why uh, there are no plots in the artworks by Kandinsky? So uh, you have media components uh, like uh, sounding. Uh, we worked with all uh, formats of uh, how you perceive information. We had uh, Vladimir Rayevsky, a stunning journalist, working together with us. A couple of pictures from our night uh, uh, shows uh, at Park Culture. Uh, well, gathering uh, 300 guests at uh, um, 2.30 a.m. and we had a queue uh, before entrance and just I would like to touch upon uh, the next uh, website and the evaluation we were uh, highly appreciated by the mayor Sergei Sabanin who repeatedly published in his Twitter and uh, Instagram accounts uh, his appraisal to the project and uh, also many uh, big artists uh, uh, thanked us and praised us so what were the results for the Tretikov uh, Fine Arts Gallery? So, um, the uh, increase by 33% in the first three months and over uh, 150 publications in the media. We could attract people from the social networks and uh, the most exciting of it uh, was the audience we could reach uh, because uh, Park Culture Station um, in a mega city this is where you have traffic so we uh, could uh, outperform Sirov uh, the famous exhibition in Moscow thank you so much well of course uh, but uh, colleagues uh, we would like to congratulate you. This is a true hit of the year. And now, from a triumph in Moscow, the triumph of 
transport and culture, I would like to uh, part to the situation in the um, regions. Uh, so in uh, Yarkova will and her life city will tell us about uh, the situation in Kazan and how it was uh, how art was introduced into the city content. So I'm pleased to be the only rep representative of regional structures and I would like to tell you how we interact with the urban environment and he, here you need to understand that um, Kazan is uh, very conservative in terms of uh, how cultural life is organized in the city and uh, till recently all processes were concentrated in public uh, agencies which led to a sort of stagnation in culture and no Mm, initiatives from below uh, from the outside and at a certain point of time we got an understanding that we need to restructure communication with our uh, spectators and consumers and processes going on in public institutions are limited by nature so uh, if you're limited by some academic uh, spaces you have restrictions. So that's why from 2013 our uh, Life City Foundation uh, originated. So I would like uh, to draw your attention to our most iconic projects. So the art uh, uh, preparation city. So actually for one week we would invite uh, the most uh, renowned theater producers from Russia and from abroad and they will use the underground gallery at the central uh, street so the um, civil registrar's office uh, roofs and uh, squares and parks so this is a festival of uh, theater uh, so this is like an art residence. We work just for one week and then we have all those uh, shows uh, uh, be, uh, ongoing in our theatres all through the summer. So the spectator in this case uh, uh, become a participant and also Sviersk Artel uh, a festival which will take place on the 22nd, 20, uh, 21st, 22nd of July. So f the principle is the same. We work with the mythology of this island in Sviyarsk and uh, Sviyarsk Kartel and uh, Gordart Podgotovka were like image brand for Tatarstan uh, because they gather the theater community of uh, Russia and attract a number of uh, partners. So, as a summary, uh, the urban environment itself becomes the object of art. And you may ask, why theatre needs it? So that allows us to overcome traditions of uh, academic theatre. It's also about uh, attracting a new audience. In Sviyarsk, uh, uh, when we were showing a uh, theatre performance, yeah, so, uh, uh, a mature guy came to us and said, well, so is it theater? Yeah, well, it's better than in penitentiary. So people who never uh, visited a theater performance uh, are attracted. And after that, they would go to uh, traditional academic theaters. And we have a lot of initiatives coming from the outside. So it's like launching a mechanism, and then it starts to work uh, independently. And as for sites, as for objects, it attracts the attention from businesses and all locations we worked with they found uh, their owners their masters so this is a t sort of a service to the city and to the businesses and our work is an example well i don't think there are a lot of uh, good examples in Russia of the public-private uh, partnership. So we work with the, with our president, with the government, and the results were qu quite favorable because uh, private structures uh, get uh, more um, credits of confidence and the impetus. I hope it will spread over other regions as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Inam. Now,
I would like to proceed to the case and presentation by Yulia Means. Yulia represents the Russian Impressionism Museum, which is also a, a good example of gentrification, a, an example of how you can work with industrial space. We have a lot of uh, cases uh, in Moscow how older industrial spaces are revitalized and are acquiring a cultural component. Yulia, the floor is yours. Um, good afternoon. I would like to tell you about the idea of creating a museum. So our tasks, uh, our original tasks when we were uh, launching the project and on the results. So um, the idea uh, originated long ago, but as for the location, so the choice was spontaneous and, uh, well, really random choice. So when in 2010 the old territory of Bolshevik confectionery factory was bought, so it realized that uh, factory buildings uh, so had some buildings, um, well, like a cylinder-shaped building with only um, uh, staircases of metal. It was built back in 1970, so it's not historical. It was quite different from the classic um, Bolshevik types. It was used uh, for storing flour and sugar. Um, it was clear that people cannot work there because there were no windows. But we realized that uh, it, the building was ideal Mm, uh, for a museum, because in a museum you don't need uh, windows and daylights. And we decided to put Russian um, Impressionist Museum and uh, even port of an architect from the John uh, uh, McCastle, an English uh, architect bureau, uh, engaged in the project. So uh, many business centers uh, so this is a place where people come uh, um, for their leisure time, to spend their leisure time. And I see a lot of parents uh, with uh, uh, strollers, uh, with babies and children who come uh, to have some uh, Vienna strudel. And also the portfolio of N1 had a project of collaboration between um, art and business. So this is like Stanislavski Business Center. So together with commercial um, and premises, uh, you have uh, the studio for uh, theater art. So we wanted uh, this uh, museum to be at high level, uh, very sophisticated and high tech. As for the high tech, uh, there are two uh, things we are proud of. So the air conditioning system which allows to control climate and preserve uh, um, paintings in a good conditions and also the loading and unloading system. And it took us a lot to understand how a car can enter the building and uh, be unloaded to the storage uh, halls. And everything was done is that um, to have that platform uh, uh, which allows uh, the car to be inside the building. So many modern museums like that possibility. So this is our advantage as a museum. Talking about the results of uh, to being technological everywhere, about the content of the museum, audio and video guides is working on iBeacon technology. Uh, talking about the results of our work on the 26th of May, the museum celebrated its uh, one year anniversary. We understood that the museum was very popular, which is uh, quite pleasant. So about uh, 1.9 thousand people attend every day. So 91 minutes is uh, average time of uh, visit, which is very good for a new museum. When it comes to our programs here, we're trying to be maximally creative, uh, try to experiment and we uh, launched special program uh, together with the Library for uh, Foreign Literature. So 
one of our pictures goes to the library of uh, Russian city. So we visited eight Russian cities for the year. Uh, when it comes to the Lightning program, here we have a very uh, unconventional approach to organization, some interesting quests, uh, family events, master classes, lectures, standard lectures, the concerts. Uh, for instance, we had the concert of young musician Kirill Richter, which was quite successful, and the inclusive program, we are proud of it, and we are uh, working quite actively on that currently. It seems to me that our museum is somewhere on the forefront. It seems to me, as an example, some of our uh, pictures are illustrated in volume packages, so people who are hard of uh, seeing can get to the exhibit and to understand what uh, it is. And now we are adding up some uh, tactile sites. We are quite young. We have a young team. We are quite open to the experiments. So we try to be creative at everything we are doing, everything we are striving for is the attempt to go beyond the standard perception of the museum space, to turn the museum into the, this lovely place where you want to get back to. Thank you very much for your insight. So, uh, give the floor to Ivan Romanov and one more um, uh, case from Moscow, uh, case uh, getting our capitals together about Hermitage of Moscow. So, we are quite curious of that. Thank you very much for this introduction. I'm going to talk about the Zilact uh, project, renovation of the uh, territory of uh, Zoo factory and what new approaches have been used and what modern trends uh, exist in terms of uh, new special development exists, how culture and art uh, are involved. And the sites we are complementary in this regard. So first of all, I would like to talk not only about Zillart, but about successful experience of similar projects in the world and what uh, peculiarities this project possess. This is a book uh, example of London docks when the place of the previous docks there is a new cultural center and uh, Kenner Wharf is one of the busiest uh, underground stations. It is uh, probably the most uh, amazing project of uh, renovation of the territory, of course. It is uh, the most successful Porto Madero project in Buenos Aires in the territory of high grade crime. Uh, for 10 years, they developed a new fashionable neighborhood which uh, turned out to be the most expensive one. It is unprecedented for the modern European cities case when thanks to the uh, implementation of Leon Confluence uh, project of Leon uh, increased uh, twice its fjord city where a new bank ri river bank site uh, was uh, created the length was 13 uh, kilometers and it became the concentration of cultural sites. So going into detail on those sites uh, which uh, within this framework of uh, renovations, this is Docklands, uh, the conference center, which in 2009 hosted G20 meeting. Apart from that, it became a cultural center of London. Even during the Olympic Games, it was used as a sports site. It is a modern museum of urbanism, the Museum of Urban Science, which shows 
a very extraordinary approach is to architecture. It uh, brought together the best collections from the world. To facilitate the enlightenment of uh, corresponding approaches, and very experience, interesting experience of Puerto Madera when in the uh, harbor there were some boats and they were turned into thematic museums uh, along with new bridges which uh, bridged the uh, channel. It became a cultural center and became a driver and facilitated not only the popularity of this place, which was to create a new story, but it became the point of attraction. So analyzing, yeah, along with that, of course, the Museum of uh, Confluence in Leon. It is a huge museum. It uh, combines not only uh, uh, the uh, contemporary art installation and modern art. It is used as an exhibition space, which is quite an interesting uh, case of combination of different types of use. It's a um, Munka Museum in Oslo, where it was uh, created for the purpose of popularization of uh, Scandinavian art. So the main task was to attract new tourists and new people who were interested in art and uh, make them familiar with the local art. So what conclusion can be made out of all these projects? What is the trend? The trend is that after the 20th centuries of industrial development in uh, metropolises, when the main driver of development among the cities used to be the, the development of new factories, new facilities, and people were the resources without which these factories could not just exist. In the 21st century, the new trend is the city space has a new function factories and plants uh, diminishing the territory or they just move out of the city territory. This uh, deficit territory is used more intensively. Uh, there is another trend that the life space of every family is decreasing. That is the uh, trend which has been in place for a number of decades, not only in the world, Russia, but in the world. And due to this trend, there is a huge need for public space development, not only the recreation uh, space, but it is the necessity to create in one neighborhood, in one district, uh, localized system of everything which is required for the uh, personality development, for enlightening, for education, for him to uh, take rest uh, and the distance uh, should be quite low among all these points within the system. So there is a requirement uh, for creation of new spaces uh, different from uh, previous ones. This is the main trend used in the Zeal Art project. So to be brief, it is the major project uh, in Moscow for uh, last years when we started to prepare for the Olympic Games 1980. It is the major project in the modern Europe, the project of redevelopment, and in the territory of 670 hectares is going to be called so-called the city inside the city. So it is going to be new in terms of the context, in terms of the functionality. So it is underpinned uh, by the residential uh, complex Zeal Art. Uh, so that was the main driver of the project and the main difference of this project is the format, the city inside the city is the combination of different spaces, multifunctionality uh, within which this cultural component uh, exists. So this is a concept of five spaces, uh, living space, uh, natural space, the park which is uh, bigger than uh, Guel Park in Barcelona. As an example, it is being constructed. This 
autumn is going to open its gates to its pat visitors. Of course, it is open public space, it has no gates, but uh, uh, it was uh, an attempt to uh, spat everything inside. It is the space of uh, knowledge in single educational center we get at schools, kindergartens, we make it made it safe, connected it with um, living uh, neighborhoods by pedestrian passes in order the child can reach this site without crossing the highways. This is the space of attraction. It is the main boulevards uh, and uh, where the main streets where all these sites are located, the space sites, uh, and we imply huge concentration of cultural and art sites, a dramatic theater, the theater of puppets, the concert hall, the picture gallery, and of course the diamond the hermitage of Moscow, the modern uh, museum, um, the museum of modern art. And in the park, in the streets, it's a huge space for street art, for different installations to make this territory the point of attraction for all the Moscovites, for all the guests and visitors of Moscow. And of course, it is the space uh, for recreation activity. It is the Bank River, so River Bank site. And it is similar to Arsa uh, River Bank uh, when there is a linear park, uh, 1.3 uh, kilometers uh, up to 50 meters wide, the place where you can take rest and keep in maximum close to the Moscow River and very cozy cafes which are situated along the river bank side make it more comfortable. So I have covered almost everything. I would like to be brief and talk about the Museum of Modern Art. The Architectural Bureau of Asim Tort from New York and Hani Rashid, uh, the architect, uh, decided to tackle this uh, very ambitious task. It's a joint project with the state Hermitage. The Hermitage has uh, quite uh, un not uh, covered uh, volumes uh, when it comes to the the assets of uh, modern art they need space and the emergence of this uh, branch of hermitage we saw a very interesting trend which allows it's not St. Petersburg Museum it is the very well known world museum to make closer to Moscovites and to other museum centers and to provide some kind of competitiveness. I'm going to adapt to that. And uh, it is interesting for our colleagues. Of course, we are just developers. Our contribution is to uh, produce this building, uh, to provide exploitation, and the Hermitage provides from the, uh, uh, the piece of art we are working with the art. And here I have a unique situation. I'm among uh, on those who are very close to me. Uh, except Yulia needs uh, all the representatives with whom the tragic of Gorlik has been cooperating with Zillard. We has managed project dedicated to Kandinsky and his unique space in after Zavatskaya uh, underground station. We we um, played out the performance and our next project uh, supported by Zillard is a restoration. It is a unique. Uh, piece of art, just the single one in the world, the art is supporting this restoration. So we're going to have a very interesting conversation with our speakers and participants. I would like to add that modern art, uh, not only in Hermitage, uh, Moscow, we have uh, a new streets named after avant-garde uh, artists which are not in Hermitage, uh, but in Tretikov Fine Arts Gallery. Of course, of course, uh, the names of sculptors, uh, painters, architects, um, which are, which the streets in this uh, Zeal Arts uh, neighborhood bear the name, so are um, 
iconic representatives of this period because the embankment is named after Mark Chagall and the first pedestrian street uh, which was first commissioned. Uh, okay, okay, it's good. Uh, this is a great deal of uh, positive PR for us. So, uh, I am through. Thank you. Well, mm, classy work. Thank you so much. So, Hermitage uh, Moskva, uh, what's the stage? When will you open? So, we are undergoing the state expertise at the moment, and we plan to open next year. And now I would like to pass the floor to Marina Lubelska, our final uh, speaker, uh, partner of the Final Strategic Gallery for many years. Yeah, so we create uh, museum spaces together with Tretikov Gallery. Okay, so in the best traditions, I would like to continue this PR, and I would like to say some words. So we, I work in Cross Air Development Company, which has 25 years in the market, and in these years, we were always guided by the principle mm, formulated by Petruvium. Uh, like usefulness, uh, robustness, and beauty. And today we will uh, go uh, through our track record for recent 25 years, and we always had to do with art. Although we are a developer, we were a contractor for the Russian Orthodox Church, and the church art was something that uh, was transforming our spirituality for centuries and was uh, bringing us up. And when we were lucky enough uh, to touch upon with the project in uh, the yard of the Tretikov Gallery, Oksana, you may remember it, how depressive it used to be. It, there was a great contact between what we saw inside and what we saw from the outside. And uh, Speech, a wonderful architect, uh, uh, architect's office, um, did the project, and it was like a charity program which we carried out together with uh, Oksana. Uh, Oksana was like a construction foreman. Now she knows everything regarding construction and she can build uh, her dasha. So the total area is uh, 4,000 uh, square meters. We tried to keep this uh, fountain composition and that uh, wonderful granite and marble that remained there. And we tried uh, to carry out uh, the reconstruction uh, because uh, there was uh, an exposition of Ivazovsky exposition, and we wanted to celebrate it in the new patio, in the new yard. And you see that the outside was revived, and uh, the goal was for the people who come to Tretikov Gallery so that they could um, step out into the patio and continue this uh, communication with Tretikov Gallery. Well, not just sitting in a cafe, but maybe listening to some lectures. So uh, the organizers had to establish a lectorium, uh, game zones, and it was all covered uh, with Wi-Fi. And when we uh, opened this museum patio before the city day. It was a great present, a great gift uh, to Muscovite. So this was utterly successful. Everybody enjoyed, people communicated. It was a natural continuation after you visited the museum. So that's positive. That um, uh, blow of uh, um, Art, yeah. Of course, for a museum, uh, the availability of such a public space, like a, a museum patio, it is a hub, which involves uh, people, the audience, like in the case of Metro. Uh, so uh, they are attracted to museum in a public space, in a decontracté, in a free format. So. When we opened the patio, 
everybody started uh, to think about how we can leave uh, the limits of the patio and go to the embankment in order to continue uh, that acquaintance with the gallery. But it was not occasionally that we continued this mutual activity and we our next project with the Tretikov Gallery. So you see um, figures on uh, the greenery and um, pavement and we would like to um, you to know about cross so we are experienced in uh, reorganizing public spaces so we have a landscape office with over 300 people and I hope that you uh, find arts galleries happy with the uh, the volume of work performed and our next uh, work continued uh, in one of our neighborhoods which is being uh, renovated and we um, uh, completed uh, pulling down uh, the last uh, five uh, story building so it's like the Walton Park the Golden Mile so in this Golden Mile project we decided to continue our experience with the Tretico Fine Arts Gallery and um, so this art was brought to public areas it was a very exciting project with uh, thousands of reprint works and Oksana was personally involved and requirements uh, of the Tretikov Gallery were um, at the highest uh, standard so we had specialists and we completed all requirements so you see photos uh, in public spaces and people who leave uh, them they start asking questions and it provokes them to uh, become more and more acquainted with the um, art so the opening uh, you see yourself so the opening uh, ceremony was very nice and solemn we will continue with this work with Oksana because not only in this project but in others we are proactively implementing the idea of uh, revival the art for the masses and of course art is not just uh, paintings uh, but also the uh, skill of working with the, the original sources and materials that uh, can be used to recreate art so the public space which we believe to be the main attraction point in developer project is seen as art as well and we go back to original materials so if we talk about pavements we use nice ornamental uh, design like meander which was created uh, before um, people um, invented alphabets so also some art objects and landscape um, also artworks and all surfaces whether horizontal or vertical uh, we try to make them creative and to render a uh, motif uh, to use it as uh, an educational space for um, like uh, to encourage children to touch and develop so you see this meander uh, in one of our um, sites uh, like a magic uh, design and some of our projects maybe you know them. when you go to the uh, Novorysk uh, highway close to uh, Krasnogorsk uh, together with Italian uh, avant-garde uh, artist Mario Arlate so this is the biggest picture of 45,000 uh, square meters so it's like a fresco on three residential buildings of 43 buildings so uh, handmade in 
public spaces to, with artwork by the master, by the great master himself. And here in this project, we also work with Italian masters from Ligurian art school. And uh, they decorated facades, uh, front walls. So uh, it was dedicated to Portofino project. So you see uh, some real life uh, photos. So this is real art. And uh, to wrap up, I would like to tell you briefly that, uh, of course, our consumer, uh, the individual, should be the top priority, and we fight for um, attention of uh, the end users for the quality of life, for the living standards. Uh, so, as developers. And to conclude, I would like to quote the great Jan Gale, uh, who influenced a lot uh, transformation in Moscow, who met our mayor and many uh, of his books on urban spaces were uh, published. So he um, pays a lot of attention to the beauty uh, and uh, we are based on works by Jan Gell. Thank you so much for your attention. I would like to invite you to our site to touch and feel uh, the true art. So, colleagues, uh, we made it exactly on time. It's five o'clock sharp, but I would like to use my right as a moderator. I would like uh, to um, ask a question to cross development. Everything is so fine. So artists uh, cooperate with museums and uh, with developers. So if it's so good, why uh, doesn't uh, every, why aren't uh, everybody doing that? Well, I would like to say a couple of words. I believe that only companies that have uh, Mm, rich experience can do that. And also every company has uh, motivation and competitive advantages they use. For Crosta and also for some of my colleagues, in development business uh, you must understand that profit is not and should not be the determining factor. Uh, it's not possible to work without profit. But if you work only for the sake of profit, well, then it's not possible to tell you that uh, the buyer's loyalty, loyalty of people, and working for the future dozen years, is likely to give some feedback. But I can tell you, that was the main uh, motivating factor for us because we were, were searching for many years and every developer company is always searching for the best available solutions. So this is a very favorable terrain and take a look at how many people visit museums today. It was impossible. It was not possible uh, to see a queue for Serov and Ivazovsky, and it should be reflected, reflected in projects we implement. At least this is what I believe. Ivan? I believe it's uh, much simpler than that. In my opinion, uh, first of all, Mm, let's understand that for a developer, the main business is to invest in uh, real estate and uh, uh, get the profit uh, back to continue designing other buildings and parks, museums, concert halls. So, uh, are not uh, profitable sites, and it's quite easy to explain. On the, the example of our project, why 
this is done or not done. So you don't have a direct effect from a museum or a concert hall, but they increase uh, the value of the real estate. So we are for the logic of a businessman. Why don't others do it? It's possible to return that money and the developer can invest it in creating um, sites which would not be necessarily profitable, like a mega project. Uh, possibility of an indirect effect. If that would be a small site, we would build a museum center and it would add to the cost of existing real estate for other developers. Uh, so we would n not go into the project, but in our case, in our neighborhood, we raise the cost of uh, real estate in the area and we can invest uh, that money. So I would like every one of you to have mega uh, projects. I would like to thank our speakers and the audience.